history legacy, if you will, uh, hosted over uh, our friends looking for group in Brookline over uh, in, in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, so let's get into the big question with our boy, uh, the Riz, putting down the video games for a moment so he can tell us what the big question is. I actually did do that, Sorg. Yeah, okay. Um, so with the recent uh, bloodied or no bloodied, whatever you want to call it, a main event segment that was Triple H and just destroying uh, Roman Reigns uh, the, with the blood everywhere and all that stuff. Uh, and the equally bloodied, probably, in the Hell in a Cell match is going to happen in WrestleMania between The Undertaker and Shane McMahon. My question to you guys is, what what, what was one of your f- memories or matches that you can recall was one of the bloodiest matches you've seen? Oh, 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 Sorg, oh. Sorg, you you, you oh. wanna you wanna speak for the? Oh. You, wanna, you, you have something to say? Oh, um, the biggest one I I, I recall is uh, uh, that really kind of struck me was the and again not having uh, watched. At the time, the the uh, Hell in a Cell, the original Hell in a Cell craziness, uh, the first few matches, including uh, the the King of the Ring one, um, one that sticks out for me is Triple H and uh, and and Cactus Jack uh, in the in the Hell in a Cell uh, again, kind of the the gimmick fall through the cage kind of thing that they did. Um, but but no, that one that one sticks out for me uh, uh, certainly. Okay, who has another one? Oh, pick me, pick me. Oh, oh, wheels. Wheels. Yay. All right. You know, honestly, any match back in the NWA or WCW dealing with Ric Flair (laughs) in any of his matches, the man knew how to bleed. I mean, he'd come out golden locks. But any match, I swear, I swear he could stumble on his tennis shoe and bleed. I mean, his hair went from gold to red. I'm like, he, Ric Flair was one of my favorite bleeders of all time. That's a weird Hashtag statement. All red, everything. <laughs> okay, you win that one. <laughs> Mike, you, uh, you also win the next answer. I actually have um, one that was not televised. Hmm. Uh, it's one of my favorite matches I've ever seen live. It was a uh, SmackDown house show in the Mid-Hudson Civic Center. And it was a match, Eddie Guerrero versus The Undertaker. Ooh. And Eddie actually played it for the match. Wow. And it was like a no-DQ match. At they a house show. all over the place. At a house show. And it was fucking sick. It was really, really good. Like, it wasn't like like a Judgment Day with JBL or something like that. But it was it was enough where, like, where you don't expect it at a house show and it's it it just gave the match so much more intensity like it was towards the end of eddie's run too like it was um i want to say it was the same year he passed away but yeah it was really because it was the main event it was for the wwe title and everything and it was just awesome it was really really good awesome awesome anyone else Uh, i got one in mind um because uh, the one I thought of was something – I actually have the event on DVD. And Ladies and gentlemen, that's the voice of Eamon Payton. We did not introduce him. <laughs> Eamon yeah, Payton, the voice Eamon of Inspire Payton. Pro Wrestling, has joined us. And Hi. Since the former out of the way. Um, no, uh, it's from uh, the Royal Rumble 2004. Uh, and it's a match that's not really talked about anymore, but I think it was a really phenomenal match was the uh, last man standing between Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Um, very bloody match. Uh, it ends with both of them just basically collapsing and not, it, it ends in a draw, basically. Um, uh, it's extremely bloody. I also remember it more vividly because I remember I had the DVD for this event, and they have a special feature on the DVD of showing them being like getting medical assistance backstage, and they both get basically taken into the same like like medical like office area or whatever in the arena. Uh, and they're both de- pretty much dead almost, but they're still trying to get at each other. Like Shawn Michaels is like ripping curtains, like like trying to get at Triple H when they're like covered in blood and can barely move. Like it's it's 
pretty amazing. Uh, I, I don't know if there's anywhere to find it other than on the DVD of it. But yeah, it's it's really spectacular. That's awesome. That's Mainstream awesome. Matt. Mainstream sure. Matt, proprietor of um, the uh, Mayhem Mania. Well, I've been uh, watching a lot of old uh, ECW lately on the uh, network, 94 Vintage. Um, and there's always a good amount of bleeding um, from that era. But uh, another ECW match that definitely stands out as being bloody and gruesome was uh, a barbed wire match that Terry Funk and Sabu had. And it's kind of extra legendary because if you watch the old ECW television show, they would run the, the basically the promo to order the VHS tape of this match a, a every single episode. And it would mm-hmm. just be the Phantom of the Opera song and Sabu being thrown into the barbed wire in slow motion. Um, and anyway, there's a point where like Sabu, like, the barbed wire like rips Sabu's arm apart and he duct tapes his arm back together and they keep fighting and it's gruesome. It's terrible. Um, I think, I think Paul Lee said that that was like that after they did that match, he swore he wasn't going to do barbed wire again. I might be misquoting him, but wow. I swear I'm, uh, I, I'm remembering now that he said something along those lines. I, I believe it. Um, and we got a few, uh, actually we got one from Twitter actually. Um, Tweeters. Uh, so, some, some new friends. I, I'm, I'm hoping to introduce you to my new friends here. On a future episode of Wrestling Mayhem Show from Max Out, uh, they have their album kind of starting to go around here. Uh, but uh, they said uh, the, 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 the Austin versus Hart WrestleMania 13. I was there. They say uh, a, a pizza faced uh, a mark in the stands at the Rosemont Horizon. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, from the chat room, uh, Garza says the uh, uh, the original Muta scale match. Great Muta from Hiroshi Hasi in 92. Honorable mention to Bueller McGillicuddy versus Bill Alfonso in ECW. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, oh, also, yeah. We had some other ones from the chat I'm trying to bring up now. Uh, Shane versus Angle at King of the Ring 2003 from Bobby F. J. Town. Uh, uh, Tommy Rich versus Buzz Sawyer. And, uh, and that's from you, Matt, actually. That, that, that's not from me. That's from... Um... Oh shoot! I'm sorry, son. I forgot your name. Tragar. Tragar. They Tragar. I, I, I tried to draft. I, it, it's a little bit more obscure, so I tried to find a uh, an image for everybody. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, it was a little higher. Of Atlanta. Yeah. So we got a picture there of that uh, uh, bloody-ish brawl from after. I'm, I'm sorry. It, there's too much. Uh, there's too much time on this picture to see the blood, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, I think, I think it's one of those things, it, you know, yeah, it, it, it's memorable, right? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, how many times, uh, even in the past year where there's been an accidental busted open, right? And that it, 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 somehow it does, it makes the match, you know, feel more real and, and, and gets us kind of into it a little bit more. It's kind of curious to see, uh, what that's about yeah. you know, and how that affects us. Uh, Riz? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I was jumping between two back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like a, like a tennis ball match, a tennis match. And it just kept on going back and forth. Uh, one, because I was there, but I can't look past how, like, I wasn't there for this one, how gruesome the first Elimination Chamber was. Oh, I was there for that one. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty bad, too. Pretty- I mean, Triple H almost died. Mm-hmm. Shawn Michaels was a bloodied mess. Um, like just the images alone were. I think that was one of the first times WWE actually used like the black and white uh, imagery whenever they showed blood or something like that. And it was probably good that they used that because it would have been everywhere. Well, I know they used it for. Uh... Sean's return match at SummerSlam earlier oh, yeah, in the year, too. True. That's true. Yeah, but that was around the time where they started doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, man, like, like, that was not Lexicla- Lexic- whatever, Lexiglass or whatever they called it. Mm-hmm. Lexan. 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 That wasn't six times stronger than glass. That was, that was fucking glass. <laughs> and it was, you can tell. Um, and just that, just those images alone make me kind of. Mm. Uh, but it, 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 told, it, it, it was a good match too. Can I tell you? Also, maybe, oh, this, go ahead. This, sorry, sorry. One more honorable mention. Um, this isn't a bloody match per se, 
but there's a huge spot in it that just looked bad. The hardcore match on ECW on uh, TNN, uh, not on TNN, on Sci-Fi, between RVD and Bob Holly. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Where the table broke the wrong yeah. way, and he got a gash right up his back. Uh, yeah. Oh, that 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 still gives me a jibbly. But don't, that started that that started the end for Bob Holly. Like, didn't didn't he get like staff from that? Was it from that particular thing, or was it the was it the one against Brock Lesnar where he like he got cut on his leg or something? I, I, I don't. I thought it was just general, like just being around the ring, and like he just acquired it. Like I didn't mm. think it was anything in particular like that. Um, and, and there's also, I think you guys kind of moved into this a little bit, but there's also the, you know, have you seen the thing that went too far? For me, a lot of CZW stuff that I've seen, too far. Yeah. You know? Like, especially. Uh, that'll, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that'll do it. Like the one DVD, Just name those three letters, or Right. The one DVD I got from uh, Netflix completely turned me off from the promotion for several, several years because I'm like, you know, the guy's like, you know, I think it's Danzig, probably. Zandig, 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 Zandig. Yeah. you know, he, and, and it looks like he's Dan, like a, Danzig, yeah, that's Danzig's a, much Danzig. different. That's a different guy. That's a, 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 not quite as hardcore. Uh, but like, I, I swear, I saw like a tendon hanging from his arm or something. It might have been taped now in retrospect, but still, just like you know what, 